Hey, what's going on, everybody? Dan here. I've got Jordan from Walnut Ridge here. Jordan, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, man. Thank you for taking some time. So I pulled him off. He's the expert. I said, Jordan, we're doing Mythbusters. This is Mythbuster number two, hopefully. Maybe number one, depending on how I edit these bad boys. But um, one of the, the things that I hear a constant conversation about is metal versus fiberglass. Right. And when we bought our RV, our buddy bought an RV right before we did. And he's like, oh, get metal, don't ever buy fiberglass, it delaminates. Sure. So what I would like you to do, if you don't mind, is we've got a model of each right here. Yep. Talk about each one, and then if you've got any information about the delamination, that'd be great. Just share, share what sure. you know, buddy. Yeah, so... Basically, it's really relative which one's better for you. Obviously, there's a big price difference between the two, so if budget is a big issue, obviously the, the metal is gonna be a cheaper construction style. The main reason for that is these are framed out of wood as opposed to the aluminum framing that you find in the fiberglass trailers, for the most part. Some of them are still wood, but most of them are, are aluminum um, sided or uh, so, framed. Let me ask you this real quick. So you're saying most of the time, not necessarily always, but most of the time, the metal is a wood frame. Always. Metal, always. Metal is always wood frame. Fiberglass can occasionally be wood frame in some of the lower end fiberglass products, but most of the time, fiberglass trailers are aluminum framed. Okay, so that's going to make these lighter? It's going to make, them, to make yep, them lighter? It's going to make them lighter, and it's also going to make them a little more rigid because it is welded metal framing, uh, it, but it is a more, a more expensive construction style. So if you're going budget conscience, the aluminum is definitely a cheaper construction style, but it is a tried and true construction method. They've been right. building this way forever. So um, now some of the benefits of going with the aluminum siding, obviously you're not going to have the delamination issues that we were talking about. If water were to get into the sidewall, you're going to run into problems with the wood framing, but it's easily repairable because each individual section, you can see where they're seamed here, those can be removed individually and you can get into the sidewall and do whatever repairs you need to. So each one of these can actually be taken off Correct. and replaced or if something yeah. needed attention underneath, you could work on it? Exactly. Okay. So, I mean, if you, for example, if you got like a dent in it or something like that, this is much easier to repair or replace than fiberglass where it's all one big piece. You have to cut into it and patch it and it's, it's just a bigger job. So... Uh, definitely easier to repair there. Another one of the benefits, they, they typically don't fade. Sometimes you'll see on the fiberglass trailers, uh, they can fade and change color a little bit because the color is actually infused into the fiberglass and the sun wear will occasionally wear that out and you'll see some fading spots. The gel coat on the fiberglass can peel and crack. So those are some things you have to be careful of with the fiberglass and whereas this, you're not gonna have that issue. It's actually painted on here. Uh, so the metal is gonna be a little bit more durable against sun damage and stuff like that. So. Um, so let me ask you this. Number one, you're awesome. This is great information. I didn't know half of what <laughs> you just shared with me. So you talked about, I know we want to talk about the delamination, but you talked about fading and color changing and all that. Yep. But I'm sure that there's probably proper maintenance and yes. stuff that you can do for them to prevent that. Am I correct? Right. So this is going to be more resistant to that, but there are things that you can do to the fiberglass to make it more resistant as well. They offer different paint and fabric protection packages and stuff like that that you can put on these that do protect it against UV damage uh, and stuff like that. So that's going to help a lot with that. But it is an extra step that you have to take to avoid that, whereas with these it's not, you know, they're a little bit more resistant right from the factory. Okay, that makes sense. So we're looking at lighter. Mm -hmm. We're looking at easier to clean. Yep. We are, what I'm hearing, a lot of people, they consider these the fancier ones. Sure. Like, compared to this, they're a little sleeker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sleeker. Yeah. There's, there's maintenance that you can do to them to take care of them. What is this myth of all of them delaminating or the delaminating myth? Sure. So delamination is obviously the biggest fear of a fiberglass trailer. There's a couple things that go into delamination. It's kind of a, you know, there's a lot that, that's involved in that. It doesn't just happen to all of them. That's mm -hmm. not, they don't all delaminate. So that is a myth. Um, there's different ways that manufacturers will put fiberglass onto a unit. Okay. So when there's, there's three primary styles. There's a hung fiberglass wall. What that is, is that's typically going to be in the ones that I mentioned are few. They're wood framed with fiberglass exterior. Those are like a, a cheaper price point fiberglass unit. In a hung wall, what that is, is they take the, they take the wood framing, they put it up, they put the batten fiberglass insulation in, and then they just glue the fiberglass to each stud individually, and then they press the wall on manually with their hands, and that's how it's held on there. Okay. That's the cheapest way to do it. Those have the most problems. Got so it. if you're shopping for a fiberglass unit, you always want to ask if it is a hung wall, 
not necessarily that you don't want to buy that, but just know that there are more risks involved with that type of construction because it is cheaper to do. The second construction style is a pinch rolled wall. So what that is is they, they use the aluminum framing on the pinch rolled walls. They put block foam insulation. Usually they'll put block foam insulation in. Sometimes they still use fiberglass. And then they lay the whole wall out and glue it to everything. The insulation, they, they, put the, they put a backer on first, like a Luon backer. Okay. And that's going to go over the framing and over the... Um, over the uh, block foam insulation, and then they put the fiberglass on top of that. They glue it everywhere, so it's a glue all the way across, not just on the studs. And then they put it through a big pressure roller, so it literally looks like a big like baking roller or something like that. It's just oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's just pressing the whole wall together, so it gives it an, a tight, even seal. That's the second method. That's going to prevent delamination a little bit more. Um, and then the third construction style is vacuum bonded, which is the most expensive and the most thorough also the most resistant to delamination. What a vacuum bonded wall will be is they're going to take the whole thing, again they're going to put the block foam insulation, aluminum framing, the Luon backer, then they're going to glue the whole thing, put the fiberglass on. They literally put it in this ginormous plastic bag, the whole wall, and they suck all the air out to a certain pressure range. That's going to take all the air out of it to remove any bubbles, any separation issues at all, and it gives it a tight even bond across the whole wall. That's the most expensive construction style, but it also prevents delamination the most. Right. Now, nothing is delamination proof. Right. And the reason I say that is because water intrusion is the number one thing that's going to cause delamination. Okay. So, the way to fight that, obviously, you have your roof that you need to make sure you seal on a very regular basis. Uh, you need to make sure all the, the lining around the sides of the roof where the die core sealant is, you need to make sure that's treated and sealed well, or else water will get into that sidewall and it will cause that glue to separate. So... The other main issue is windows and any other extrusions in the exterior, speakers, vents, anything like that. Water can get in behind that, and it can cause delamination Even as well. Even when you're looking at like these little clips and stuff. Where yeah, any of that where... stuff, because these are obviously screwed on here. So now this is this one won't delaminate because it's aluminum, right. obviously. But if it was a fiberglass trailer like this one over here, you can see, I mean, all the lights, everything. Anything that's screwed in here all has a sealant around it, and you just need to make sure that that's kept up with. So... You know, maybe once a year or something, check your caulking around all that and make sure that's all good because water can get in there, and if it does, it will delaminate no matter how it's built. So even though there's, there's better construction styles, it's going to prevent it from happening from other causes. But right. Water can always ruin anything. So, so no matter what level of construction is involved, if there's poor maintenance from the end user's part, yes. you can have that. That's correct. I mean, that, that makes total sense. So what you're telling me is... If I got a, a really good summation of this is that both are great. Mm -hmm. A lot depends on the end user's price point. Yes. And again, also model and layout. You right. Know, uh, we have a Puma. We love Puma. We've, yeah. we've already identified some other Pumas that we like. But then when you do step into, or if you want to step into a fiberglass, arm yourself with those questions. What type of backing is it? What, you know, how was it prepared? I'm going to have to go back and look up those terms that, that <laughs> Jordan just rattled off because I don't remember them. But, and then again, going back into your price point, but I think we've seen a central theme in this is maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. There yep. is no one solution that just makes it completely fine to do. Sure. I mean, water is going to make a, a trailer like that delaminate. Obviously, water will also ruin these too. So, you have to be careful and maintain everything. This won't delaminate, but you're going to get rot in your studs and stuff like that, and your wall board, and you know. So you run into the same issues with water either way. It's just really damaging. So maintenance is definitely the key. Another big thing about fiberglass that we hadn't hit on yet is a weight range. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you have a half ton truck or something where you're limited to let's say five or seven thousand pounds of tow rate tow weight. Um, you're probably going to want to look at a fiberglass option because of the aluminum framing, they're significantly lighter. So it opens up a much wider range of what you can purchase for uh -huh. your money and be able to tow it well. So um, that's another big advantage of that, whereas the uh, aluminum-sided trailers are just typically heavier. So with that wood framing construction, they're just heavy. So. So I think that goes back to all the other videos that we've done so far that I think help. Uh, and Jordan, a lot of the videos we've done so far are talking about understanding RV weights, understanding your truck and vehicle weight, weight limits, what you can tow, before you ever show up at a dealership. Mm -hmm. That way, you're not just going, you fall in love with a model and you find out it's 8,000 pounds worth and you can pull and you got to go buy a new truck for it. But also go ahead and get those, you know, use this as, as um, a guide when you're going on, do I look at metal, do I look at fiberglass based off of all of these components and obviously it comes down to the end user preference in your pocketbook, really. Yeah.
Yep, obviously price point's a huge thing. So um, something else, if I can go back, I don't know how you want to edit this. No, that's fine. If I can go back and, and add one more benefit or, or really a difference between them, um, when you're looking at insulation value and if you're wanting to do more cold weather camping or something like that, there's also a very wide variety between these two units and what those uh, different construction styles offer for our values. So if you're looking at an aluminum sided trailer like this, the only type of insulation that they ever put in those is fiberglass residential, you know, batten insulation. So um, when you have that in your trailer, that can only do so much for the, for the R values, whereas when you step up to a fiberglass unit, you're going to open up a world of black foam insulation, which is going to add more R value, and it's just a tighter insulation value. Um, so if you're looking to do cold weather camping, like if you're looking at high-end fifth wheels and stuff like that, they're almost always fiberglass because of the framing, one thing, and also because they can open up cold weather packages that way and put that into their construction. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, so if you're looking to do three seasons camping, you can, you can go with an aluminum trailer. If you're looking to go cold weather camping, you can still do it with these. It's just going to use a whole lot more propane to heat the camper. You also have to make sure the whole underbody is skirted and stuff like that too because the insulation value in the floor on the wood frame units is a lot less than the fiberglass units also. So there's a lot of differences between the the fiber the insulation styles between the construction as well. So. Jordan, you know your shit. And I'm going to go ahead and use the word shit on this. That's like, fine. You know your shit. <laughs> Listen, guys, I have a feeling that a lot more questions are going to come about this, and I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this face more because you have some great information, my friend. Yeah, that's and what I'm here for. <laughs> I appreciate you taking sure. the time today to answer this. I feel like even though I can't recall what three types there are for these, for how they're bonded together. I feel like I'm a lot more knowledgeable and I'm a lot more prepared when I come in here. Sure. If I don't come here to buy our next RV, I feel like wherever I went, I'm going to blow that salesperson's mind because I'm going to go, is that vacuum bonded? They should know. They should know. And there's, you know, obviously there's benefits to all the different styles, but they should know that because it's a, it's a big difference in price point and in, and in uh, quality. So. Well, great. Thank you again, buddy. No problem.